The Microsoft Quantum Lab is actually an integrated part of the Microsoft Quantum Program to develop materials and devices that then are integrated into the larger Microsoft Quantum Program to build a scalable solution for quantum computing. We are vertically integrated, so we go from creation of the semiconductor layers, fabrication of nanometer scale devices, and then we measure them as well. We can really have control from the beginning to the end of the experiment, and that gives us flexibility and the ability to iterate quickly and make changes as we learn. The last 15 years I've been here at Purdue, but I've been working closely with Microsoft as well and trying to translate fundamental physics into practical devices. To develop quantum devices and quantum technology, uh, for example, uh, quantum computers, is a very elaborate process. It's not well, one particular individual device element. And so there are advances that need to be made in material science and materials development and under our basic understanding of the materials. And it's only by completing that loop that we can really understand how far we can go in making quantum technologies. But certainly this ability to go from materials design to device fabrication and measurement and complete the circle is an incredibly valuable aspect of developing new quantum technologies. So the Quantum Semiconductor System Group is answering the fundamental questions in physics. One of the biggest experimental breakthroughs that were achieved in this lab uh, was actually the experimental observation of uh, anions. In the future, this actually opens the possibility to explore even more exotic particles, uh, which are called non-abelian anions. And these non-abelian anions can be used uh, for the future quantum computer applications. The molecular beam epitaxy that we are standing in front of allowed us to grow heterostructures that uh, allowed to experimentally observe anionic braiding and experimentally prove that these quasi-particles are actually existing. That was not possible for over four years since that theory was suggested. So the development of quantum computer will allow to solve the problems that uh, used to be unsolvable with conventional computing systems. At Microsoft, we're using this hybrid approach when we're combining two-dimensional electron gas with superconductor, and such hybrid system can host elusive Majorana particles that act as a basis for topological quantum computation. I guess in this lab, the most exciting thing is explore new materials and new material combinations that can be a, a foundation for the development of topological qubit. We're taking what I think is a somewhat unique approach in that we're trying to use anions, topological degrees of freedom, as our computational basis. And so that places rather, rather strict requirements on material purity and physical properties. The promise of quantum computing, for me at least, is really can we compress, say, 25 years of chemistry into five years and advance things at much more readily than we would otherwise. Gaining academic and industry experience is very important to me because right now where the quantum world is at, there's too many things happening. So academia is still tackling new challenges. Uh, there's a lot of open questions still, uh, new materials to explore, new processes to develop. But also uh, industry is uh, putting a lot of resources into developing the technology. So here at the lab, I have had great uh, experience learning things that I will be able to apply either in industry or in academia. What we've done now, and because of the facilities here at Purdue, is built up the infrastructure so the students can see essentially the whole process. The skill sets that they develop here are in high demand. And you know that's something that's of national interest and importance. We need to be training a literate quantum workforce to remain competitive. Certainly, quantum computing has the promise to be able to allow us, humanity, to solve problems that we can't readily do right now. And I think where it could have the most societal impact is in the areas of quantum chemistry and materials, advancing the rate at which we make progress in terms of making materials with desirable properties that make our lives easier or make technologies that we don't currently have. 
I think we also are an example of how academic and industrial research can be integrated. There is an opportunity for partnership and you know, mutual benefit that I hope we can be an example for.